Hello, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us for another amicable divorce discussion where we like to give you a short topic from one of our amicable divorce network member experts. My name is Tracy Moore Grant. If you don't know me, I'm the founder of the Amicable Divorce Network. And today I am joined by one of my Georgia colleagues, Sherry Lake. Sherry's an attorney and a mediator, and we work together on some cases. And she had a really great topic that she and I both get this question a lot um, from members of the public who are really trying to resolve their case. And the question that they have is really, do they need an amicable divorce attorney or an amicable divorce mediator. And so we are going to talk about that today. Sherry, thank you so much for joining me today. Um, introduce yourself to everybody. Okay. Thank you, Tracy, for that lovely introduction. Um, I'm Sherry Lake. I am a family law attorney in the state of Georgia. I primarily work in the metro Atlanta counties. I couldn't tell you right now how many there is, but there's a lot. <laughs> um, and, um, you know, I, I get as a lawyer, I probably primarily work in DeKalb, Cobb, Fulton County, Gwinnett County. Um, but as a mediator, I'm finding particularly post COVID um, when we're doing so much more virtually now than we did before. I mean, I'm not sure that we ever did it before. Um, I, I do cases as a mediator in a lot of counties throughout the state, um, you know, as far as Savannah even. Uh, because we do it virtually and we don't have to show up in person. So that's really expanded kind of my breadth over the state. But um, I've been practicing as a lawyer uh, for over 20 years now as a family law attorney in Georgia. Um, I've been doing mediation almost exclusively, or at least I'd say probably 75 to 80% of my time is spent mediating uh, over the past, uh, past three years. I think I told you, Tracy, I've I've done over 300 mediations in the past three years. Yeah. I went back and looked at my record. So yeah, that's awesome. Um, that's a lot of what I do. And I, as far as my legal, my law practice, um, I only represent parties who are working outside of court to resolve their case amicably. And then they file an uncontested divorce uh, with their county. Um, or I also take on guardian ad litem work. That's the only... I guess, litigation that I do at this point. So I, I don't file divorces unless they're already settled. Yeah, same. So yeah. Sherry and I both have the uh, same passion in helping parties um, get resolved outside of the court system. And we're both attorneys and mediators, and we both get these calls to our office from potential clients. And, um, you know, something that we've discussed is they call us and they say, I need a mediator. <laughs> Yep. And so um, I guess the threshold question is today when people call and they say that, you know, what are you seeing that they're actually needing an, an attorney, a mediator and how, what's the difference? Yeah. So in this usually obviously comes from people that don't have attorneys already. Right. Um, they've been having discussions with their spouse about getting divorced. They feel like they're probably on the same page. They may or may not have had conversations um, in depth about what they want to do to settle their divorce. Um, but they're, they're coming into it with a sense of, I think we can get this resolved between ourselves. And what, so what I find often is people call me as a mediator thinking that's what they need. And after I talk to them, I, I, I may determine that's true, but I also may determine that's not true. And I think in, so it's clear in Georgia, uh, attorneys, cannot represent two parties to a divorce. And so I think what's challenging for folks is, again, they think we're gonna settle this case, it's resolvable, let's hire an attorney to, to do this for us or let's hire a mediator to do this for us. And what, of course, we have to tell them if, if in fact they need a lawyer is, you know, I really can only represent technically one of you because by our professional rules, there's an inherent conflict of interest between two parties getting a divorce. And so even though I know you're trying to get this resolved amicably and probably we can, mm -hmm. um, I can only represent one of you, your, your spouse may need to get their own attorney. Um, so again, I, I think uh, people come to, to us as mediators and say, hey, let's just sit down and work this out. Uh, there are states that permit one lawyer divorces. 
Mm -hmm. um, there are states that permit mediators to, to um, kind of give legal advice. That's the other distinguishing thing about Georgia. As a lawyer mediator, Tracy and I cannot offer legal advice. Yeah, uh, we can point people to the law. Here's the child support guidelines. Here's what is required of the guidelines. You can see it in text. Um, we can, I think, talk about what is equitable division by law. How is it described in the law? Um, but we can't tell a party, you should take this deal or you shouldn't yeah. take this deal. Mm -hmm. We can't discuss whether something is good or bad for them. Um, we can't create issues mm -hmm. where the yeah. parties haven't asked us to. So, uh, which a lawyer can, you know, yeah. when you hire a lawyer. So, um, again, to this sort of question, when somebody ca calls up and is like, "Do I need a mediator? Or do I need a lawyer mm -hmm. uh, to help me in my amicable divorce?" Because again, the goal for yeah. the kind of work that Tracy and I that do is we're going to help y'all get a resolution if it can yeah. happen. But I always tell people it's just a matter of what hat I'm going to wear, you exactly. know, so, and people get frustrated because they see we're attorneys and we're mediators and they want us to help them resolve the dispute and then do the paperwork for them, a one-stop shop, which would right. be great. And I um, appreciate um, their, you know, ideal in, in getting that done, but in Georgia and some other states are different, you know, the Amicable Divorce Network, we're now all over the world and we've learned mediation, your role as a mediator is probably one of the biggest things that changes by jurisdiction. Um, but in Georgia, a, a, a mediator is a neutral, we're not on anybody's side and an attorney is on one party's side, so to speak, they're rendering legal advice to just one person, not both. Right. And so um, that's sort of the question we pose to people. Do you need somebody neutral to help you resolve your dispute or do you need an attorney to advise on how to resolve this? And if so, we can only represent one person and people find that really frustrating. Yeah. And um, I get it. And I will say so. So a mediator's job is to help people resolve their dispute, their disagreement, their divorce. A lawyer's job is the same, you know, mm -hmm. you know I'm, <laughs> oh, I'm totally helping my that. client, but yeah. I'm only helping one party. A mediator is helping both parties. A lawyer is only assisting one party. A lawyer can give legal advice, can tell you, here's sort of the range of where you probably should settle your case. Mm -hmm. You know, here's where uh, things, there's discretion, you know, here's kind of strict things like child support. There's certain things that have to go into a child support gu you know, guidelines, uh, but then there's always discretion within the guidelines. Uh, in Georgia, we are an uh, equitable division state, not community property. How we divide marital property is not, there's no clear rule on that. So that's where a lawyer is going to help you. Um, a mediator just helps you explore the issues, come up with ways of solving the issues, and helping you all get to the same page. Yeah. A mediator can talk to both parties. If I represent a party as a lawyer, um, I can certainly talk to my client. I can only talk to the other party if that party doesn't have a lawyer. If that right. party has a lawyer, I can't I can't talk to that party. And you can only talk to them in a way as if they were a lawyer. You can't render legal advice. Exactly. You can't, you know, tell them this is how things work with the child support calculation. You can yeah. say, Yes, the documents are ready for you to sign, or yes, we filed it and here's a copy. Very yeah. neutral things. And yeah, and do, yeah, you, so, do you agree or not? Mm -hmm. If you don't agree, tell me why. <laughs> exactly. So it's more of questions and you know, presentation and questions, certainly no legal advice. So I tell people, and as frustrating as this may be, if people come to me and after you know figuring out, are they really looking for a mediator? Um if, if they're looking, if they're clearly looking for a mediator, which means the both parties are going to meet with me online or in person, and we are going to go through all the issues that they need to work through in their divorce, and I'm going to help them try to find resolution. I do tell people, if you have any questions about what the law advises, what is a good settlement, what's a bad settlement, um, if you have certain assets that are somewhat complicated and you're not certain how to dissolve them, to share them, you know, whether it should go to one party or the other. I tell people in advance, talk to a lawyer, take an hour with a lawyer and do a consultation. 
talk to your CPA. If you need a, if you have a financial advisor, talk to that person before you come to mediation. Right. Because the worst thing for me as a mediator is to have two parties that we're, we're, it's usually going to be one of them doesn't have the information they need to be able to get the case resolved. Yeah. They're not informed. Mm -hmm. I think I will say my experience when people come without lawyers, they both seem pretty interested in getting it settled and yeah, they definitely. are oriented in that direction, but they may not have done enough homework, you know, to be able yeah. to answer the questions and, mm -hmm. and, and it, and I can't answer them for them. So yeah. I encourage people, even though it is an additional cost, you know, to take that time to educate before you come, um, you know, versus when I'm, you know, one thing I wanted to talk about, Tracy, is again, people, I think when people are coming asking for one lawyer or one mediator, it's because that feels less conflicted, yes. right? That feels yes. like we're really trying to resolve this. Yes. And so if I have to hire a lawyer and you have to hire a lawyer, all of a sudden it's no longer as amicable, you know, yeah. but this is the work Tracy and I do all the time where there's two lawyers involved. Maybe there's only one and the other party's on their own, but um, oftentimes there's two lawyers involved. There may be a financial advisor. There may be a CPA that everybody's working with. There may be other, you know, experts that are involved. And even though the parties come into it at different perspectives, Mm -hmm. both parties are oriented towards getting it worked out. Right. And so we as lawyers take that on as well. If our clients want to work this out, it doesn't mean we're going to roll over if if our client doesn't, doesn't want us to or we don't okay. think our client should roll over. But it means we're all trying to work hard to figure out a way to solve a problem. A respectful and, negotiation is what I call it. Yes, a skillful negotiation. We And we are sharing information. Um, in good faith, nobody's hiding anything. What you get is what I encourage people if they come to me for mediation. Mm -hmm. Before you come, share information. You yeah. know, I want a mediation where people feel equally yoked. You know yes. that it's an arm's length transaction. That one mm -hmm. party is not, um, you know, again, will you know? I guess if you're willfully without information versus um, somebody's hiding it from you, I don't mm -hmm. think that's. That's, that's not very amicable. But, so we don't we don't promote that. But I think you touched on one of the reasons the whole network was founded to begin with. And that was, you know, I would be saying to people, I can only represent one of you. And if the other person needs legal advice, we were sort of sending them out into the wild to just pick somebody. Um, and I wanted somewhere to send resolution focused people to say, go pick anybody on this website. They're going to respect your wishes to be resolution focused. And we're going to be able to work this out because unfortunately, there's a lot of family law professionals out there where if that person went and hired one of them, they would use this as an opportunity to blow things up, so to speak, and make it conflict ridden. So when we have those situations where people need an actual mediator or um, you can only represent one party but the other person should be getting you know some feedback some advice some information that's why we direct them to the amicable divorce network if they're resolution focused because the professionals on there honor your resolution desire they honor your desire to get this wrapped up um, they're not going to blow things up and that's what's very important um, as a hallmark for our members so yeah so that's really um, why we do it, so that that's we can why, help people we honor it. their and, wishes. Yeah, and it's always interesting to me how many people don't know that this is a way to do things. I think our system, for whatever reason, a lot of folks think you have to file a divorce case first. Yeah, um, there has to be litigation pending before you can talk about a divorce, uh, and I, and I, I'm, I, I can understand why the public may not know the distinguishing, you know, mm -hmm. distinguishment, but even lawyers don't, I've been surprised how many lawyers say, oh, we can do that. <laughs> you, can, yeah. you can do it. Yeah, if please. They don't, it doesn't work when everybody wants to do it. Yes. Um, you know, if it is a challenge if some, one of the parties doesn't want to participate, yeah. but as long as everybody wants to participate, it does work, which is the same with mediation. Mediation yeah. is effective if both parties want to get it settled. Um, I wanted to sort of distinguish to, so it's clear, you know, who should be hiring a lawyer, who should be hiring a mediator? Sure. Um, people that hire that, and we're talking again about unrepresented parties, right? Mm -hmm. um, 
unrepresented parties who could could maybe be served just by hiring a mediator. Now they may ultimately hire lawyers as well, but but coming into mediation without lawyers, you know, on their own, from my perspective, having done this as you know as a mediator for many years and and had participated in mediation as a lawyer for many years before that. Um, you need two people that again are sort of equally yoked that they have uh, they're competent they're they're um they feel empowered you know they're mm -hmm. able to represent themselves they have the information they need to be able to settle the case mm -hmm. a balance um, of power nobody should feel really intimidated by the other yeah. person it should be uh, we feel on equal ground we just need some assistance here exactly and and we do mediation um, we can do it together. We can do it in caucus. So even in cases where maybe you, you're in not caucus means in separate rooms for those exactly. That are, yeah, you know, caucus you're means not in the same rooms. room negotiating in the same space as the other person. Right. So even in case, so I point that out to say mm -hmm. even in cases where maybe there's some discomfort, you know, with the other party because I mean you're going through a divorce. There's sure. sometimes bound to be some issues that make you uncomfortable maybe I don't really want to hang out with this person, but I do feel like I'm competent and comfortable resolving my case with this person. We can do mediation in a way like virtually where you're at your own home and the other parties in their space. Um, we can we can start together. We can then caucus in separate rooms, you know, if you mm -hmm. want to talk privately and individually. So there's ways to do mediation, um, even in amicable cases, though, where you're still going through divorce and there could be some animosity. But, but so when we talk about you know, feeling competent and that it's an arm's length transaction. That means you feel strong enough, smart enough to be able to, to do this. Mm -hmm. um, but when I mediate, I can help people put together a really good agreement. We can, we can, you know, because the, the parenting plans come in a form from the state mm -hmm. and the child support addendum is a form, I can help them fill all that in. But ultimately, you're you're either going to need to file it on your own or find a lawyer to file everything for you. Yeah, as a mediator, we cannot that. then take and, and do your settlement agreement, all these other things. We And there's tons of little forms that go with a divorce, and we can't do that and file it with the court. Right. So there is also a gap there where they may need um, legal assistance to get that done and to get it through the system correctly and quickly because there's so many little check boxes and forms and things that need to be done yeah yeah there's it's more than just the settlement and yeah. and there's time and if you're in fulton county for example you're gonna oh, have yeah. a status conference and things like that um the person that needs a lawyer probably when they call me up and they need a lawyer and again, I'm only representing the party who's calling me. Mm -hmm. um, those are people that believe they're going to be able to work their case out, but they don't have enough information yet to know it. They're not sure what is fair or right or what makes sense. They may not. They may have a complicated asset like yeah. a, like a house that's mm -hmm. titled in both names that mm -hmm. has a small mortgage business. On it. Okay. They may have a small business. They may have a retirement account. You know, they may have pensions, things that um, aren't always divisible, you know. So those are who need a lawyer to give them advice, um, to help them either personally or as a lawyer convey to the other side, um, you know, what they want to do, maybe to ask for information. Mm -hmm. um, it's people that don't, they want to get it resolved amicably, but they don't feel equally yoked. They don't feel like they have all the information they need. They are mm -hmm. maybe intimidated by the other side, whether right. it's an intellectual intimidation mm -hmm. or, you know, uh, just a disparity of power otherwise in the marriage. Mm -hmm. um, so again, they both want to get it resolved, but they don't, they're not going to, feel comfortable doing it on their own. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, and, again, and that's a good situation for Amicable because we can exchange documents, we can do it under oath, um, use Detour Life to exchange financial information, budgets, our technology software, things like that to get everybody on the same playing field, both with having an attorney on your side that's giving you legal advice and a balance of power and information. Um, because right. people who aren't informed about what the issues are really can't make a decision about those issues so you have to get everybody on the same playing field to to get it to the finish line 
Yeah. Exactly. Lots of sports references there. So, <laughs> yeah. So I, I, and I think the biggest things to always keep in mind is mediators can't give legal advice and Georgia does not have a one lawyer divorce. Georgia mediators are not allowed to craft legal documents. I mean, mm -hmm. we can help put together agreements and things like that, but we can't add in the legalese. We can't yeah. Uh, give advice, you know, um, about what's good, what's bad. We can't raise issues that the parties may have forgotten to address. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. I, I don't want to bring up something that the parties haven't talked about because then I don't know if I'm opening up with a can of worms. Yeah. Or, you know, see, we have to be really mm -hmm. careful um, about letting the parties lead as mediators. Yeah. Where if you have a lawyer, you're going to have, have somebody help you think about those things in advance. Mm -hmm. So, um, so the, at the end of the day, if you even have a case you want to get resolved outside of the court system, it sounds uncontested, it sounds amicable, you could need a mediator and an attorney. And it just sort of depends on the needs um, of your situation on which one you need first. Um, you know, and if you point. don't know where to start, I would recommend, tell me, Sherry, if you agree to start with an attorney to assess your case because an attorney may recommend a mediation. They would help you through that process and getting you informed, finding the mediator, doing all of those different types of things. Um, whereas if you're just on your own, it would it might be harder to go directly to a mediation um, and make sure that you're covering all the bases. So if you don't know where to start, I would start with approaching an attorney, seeing what their feedback is. And if you're wanting to keep it resolution focused, um, always recommend getting somebody in the Amicable Divorce Network to assess your case, keep it low conflict, and resolve it outside of the court system. Um, and you can find any of our professionals at amicabledivorcenetwork.com under the membership directory or at divorceamicably.com, also the membership directory. Um, you can find Sherry there and her information will be under the video as well. If you want to reach out to her directly, all of that will be there. Sherry, thank you so much for your time. Um, hopefully this answers the question that we get all the time, which is, do you need a mediator or do you need an attorney? Thanks, Sherry. Thank you.